Hello everyone and welcome back to another one hour yin yoga class. If it's your first time here, my name is Katie. On this channel, I focus on yin yoga. This is the fifth class in a series of one hour yin yoga classes, where I'm inviting you to come to your mat once a week to do an hour of yin. And our goal is to create some peaceful moments. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, there's more information about this series in the description of this video. And there's also a link you can click there to sign up for some really gentle reminders to come and do your one hour of yin. For this routine, you will need a yoga block or two. You will also need a strap of some sort, a belt or anything at all, a tea towel will work. We're going to do cow face arms in this routine. But if you are ready to begin, we're going to start seated on the mat. So make yourself as comfortable as possible. You can always sit up on a yoga block or a cushion. And once you're there, you might close your eyes or relax your gaze. Lengthen through your spine, extending the crown of your head towards the sky. Bow your brain slightly towards your heart so you lengthen through the back of your neck. Relax your shoulders and feel your seat bones pressing down into whatever you're seated on. Grounding you to the earth and helping to get rid of any floaty or airy, fairy feelings that are in your body or your mind right now. Everything is becoming heavy grounded and solid. Without changing your breath, just notice yourself as you breathe in and out. You might bring to the forefront of your mind the reason why you rolled out your mat and turned on this video and sat down here. Why do you want to create more peaceful moments in your life? And staying in this position and even keeping your eyes closed we'll move into a very simple breathing exercise. If you can, breathe in and out through your nostrils. And we're going to breathe in for the count of five and breathe out for the count of five. This is sometimes referred to as same, same breath. So the goal is to keep the same pace, the same pressure, the same time on each inhale and exhale. So you can begin, I'll put about a minute on the clock for you to practice this exercise.
and keep going with this breathing exercise. It's totally normal if thoughts are starting to come into your mind. The goal here is to just notice that you're thinking and then disengage from it by coming back to your breath or back to your physical body. We'll take about three more breath cycles. And once you've exhaled, you can open up the eyes again. And we'll bring a little bit of gentle movement into our body now with a spinal twist. So you can bring your right hand over towards your left knee. Left hand comes back behind you. Inhale to lengthen your spine. And as you exhale, start to slowly rotate towards the left, maybe looking back behind you. We'll take three breath cycles here, maybe incorporating that same, same breath. Come back to center when you're ready and we'll take it to the opposite side. let's come back to center we'll put the left hand on the mat behind us and rainbow the right arm across maybe looking up at that right thumb pressing your right seat bone into the ground and pressing your right fingertips far away from you take a big breath cycle here And then we'll transition to the opposite side. And then you can come back to center. Our first yin yoga pose today is a toe squat. So we're going to get the most challenging pose out of the way to begin with and then I hope that'll give you a really nice sense of satisfaction that you completed the most difficult pose first. Now this is a pose which can feel quite intense on your knees or on your ankles or toes. If you're feeling any pain at all just come out of the pose, take a little break, you can always come back into it. We're going to hold toe squat for a minute today and it does take time to even work up to a one minute hold so don't feel discouraged or don't feel bad about yourself. If you can't do the full minute it's totally normal. So to come into a toe squat we're bringing our knees onto the mat. We want to have the balls of our feet on the mat as best we can so you might have to Fiddle around with your toes, get the little pinkies out of the way. And then we're just sitting back on our heels like so. 
So as I mentioned, if it becomes too intense, you can take a little break just by coming to stand on your knees for a moment, or you can just release the pose completely. So we'll be here for one minute if we can. Hands can rest wherever they're naturally called to, or they might come into prayer hands in front of your chest. You can incorporate same, same breath here. And toe squat is super beneficial for us. There is a saying, I think it's from traditional Chinese medicine, that you're only as young as your toes are open. So this pose helps you to really open up your toes, keep your feet nice and flexible and youthful, and just helps to get any old energy that's trapped in your ankles out of your body. And just like that, there's 60 seconds done. So when you're ready, you can come out of the pose, feet can come flat onto the mat again, and you can sit back onto your heels if that feels comfortable for you. We'll stay here like this, feeling the echo of toe squat, feeling all of that new energy within your ankles. I wanted to say too that toe squat is a really great pose to strengthen your ankles as well. Now we're going to counter toe squat with an ankle stretch. And if you're sitting like this, you're already in the pose. You're probably already feeling that stretch through the front of your ankles. You're welcome to stay here. But if you do want to go a little bit deeper, you can press your knees together and then very mindfully pick them up off of the mat. Hands can either come to your knees if you want to challenge your balance a little bit, or they can be on the ground for support. And we're staying here for one minute. But as always, if you do need to come out of the pose sooner, you're not a bad person. <laughs> Take two or three more breath cycles. Now wherever you are, you can remove your feet from underneath yourself bringing your legs out long in front of you. And we'll just take some time here to let the legs stretch out again. Maybe circle through your ankles, stretch your toes. Now our next pose is dragonfly pose. So you'll be seated on the mat for the next few minutes. As always, sitting on a yoga block or a cushion, elevating the hips can make these poses more accessible. So feel free to do that. And whatever you're sitting on, take some time to really 
press your seat bones down into the earth. We want to try have our pelvis rotating forward. So don't get too caught up on what that means. Just make sure that you're not like leaning back too much here. Then we're going to bring the legs out wide apart. Again, that might cause your pelvis to shift back behind you. You might feel this urge to lean back. So we can lift ourselves up, get our seat bones into the ground, and then encourage the body to fold forward. Now we don't have to try to get our feet super wide apart. It's not necessary. Just do whatever is comfortable for you. If needed, you can always have a bend in your knees. You can even have the soles of your feet on the floor. Once you feel comfortable, we're going to rotate our torso so it comes to face the right leg and then fold yourself over that right leg, walking your hands either side of it and imagining that you're trying to touch your nose towards your knee. We're going to stay here for the next three minutes, feeling that really nice stretch within your lower back on the left side. You might also be feeling this pose within your hamstrings and your calves. And you're also opening up through the groin as well. Reminding ourselves of the first principle of yin yoga, which is to find an appropriate edge. So we never want to force ourselves. We shouldn't feel as though we're trying to force our nose down towards our knee. Just go to that point where you can feel the stretch. You should feel as though you're challenging your body slightly, but you're not forcing it. You're not pushing it to the point of injury or discomfort. And once you find that edge, just stay there. Breathe into it and then wait for your body to invite you to go to the next edge. We'll be here for one more minute, so maybe six breaths, counting in for five and out for five. Now you can push the ground away from you, coming up to that straight spine and just taking a few breaths here in the centre. Now we'll rotate the torso so it's facing the left leg. Fold yourself over it, walking your hands away. Finding your first edge by dropping your nose towards your knee.
The second principle of yin yoga is stillness. So once you've found your appropriate depth, commit to staying still, both in the physical body and in the mind. I know that is easier said than done, but you can use your breath as an anchor. You can use the sensation that the pose is presenting to you as an anchor. And then I'll let you know when it's time to release the pose. Push yourself away from the ground, slowly settling back into that straight spine and pausing for a few breaths. Now we'll fold straight down the middle. So let's check in on that pelvis again, making sure it's rotating forward. And then walking your hands away from you, dropping your nose towards the ground, finding that first edge, holding here for the next three minutes. The third principle of yin yoga is time. And that's why we hold yin yoga poses, usually for two minutes minimum.
Start to push the floor away from you. Slowly finding that upright spine again. And this time you can bring your knees or your legs rather back in whatever way feels most comfortable. And stay seated on your mat for a few breaths, just letting that pose rebound around your body. And when you're ready to do so, you can open up your eyes again. Now we spent a lot of time with our back hunched forward and our shoulders rounded. So we're going to do cow face arms now to help to open up the chest again and stretch out your shoulders and your upper back. So this is where you'll need your strap or strap like object. And we'll have an option to incorporate shoelace pose for our hips as well. And if shoelace isn't available for you, don't worry, you can always just stay cross-legged on your mat. You can also do a broken shoelace just by crossing your ankles out in front of you. Another option is to come into half shoelace. So if you want to do that, you can keep your left leg out long in front of you and then bring your right foot to the outside of your left hip. As I mentioned before, elevating the hips will make this pose a little bit more accessible. And if you want to go a bit deeper than half shoelace, you can also bend your bottom knee as well. We want to make sure we're not sitting on our feet and you can feel both of your seat bones pressing down into whatever you're sitting on. So we'll give ourselves a few breaths here just to let the body open up into shoelace. And as we did at the beginning of the class, you might extend the crown of your head to the sky, lengthen through the back of your neck, drop your shoulders, and just let your body ground to the earth. Let anything that is airy or foggy just fall out of your body now. Now we will incorporate cow face arms. So you can place your strap over one of your shoulders. And then we'll reach the left arm out in front of us, press it away and then bring it all the way back behind you until it won't go back anymore. Turn your thumb down, bend your elbow and come to hold your strap. You want to have it somewhere on your spine, as high as is comfortable for you. And then your right arm reaches up, bend the elbow and find the strap. Again, holding it somewhere along your spine. Find your first edge by maybe walking the hands a little bit closer to each other. Point your top elbow up towards the sky and try to keep your spine nice and straight here. There will be a temptation to round forward. We'll try to avoid doing that. We'll stay here for two minutes. So make sure you have chosen a position of your hands which feels sustainable for that. If it feels too tight, go ahead and create a bit more space between your hands. As you breathe in, fill up your belly, then fill up your lungs, and then fill up your throat. And as you exhale, empty your throat, empty your lungs, and empty your belly. This is another challenging pose. So if things are coming up for you right now, as long as it's not pain, remember there's no good or bad. There's no right or wrong. 
just is what what is and if it's coming up for you it's part of your practice today we'll take three more breath cycles here When you're ready to, you can release your grip from the strap, bringing your hands back down and you can undo your legs here nice and slowly. And just come into whatever seated position feels best for you. We'll pause here, feeling the echo of the pose. Cow face arms is also a really nice pose to help improve your posture. It can help to straighten your upper spine. So tap in and see, do you feel that effect? Do your shoulders feel a little more relaxed? Are your hips slightly more open? We'll stretch out our neck in this intermission by bringing our left ear over our left shoulder. And now you can bring your right ear over your right shoulder. Maybe three same, same breaths into the left side of your neck. You can come back to center when you're ready. We'll repeat all of that on the opposite side. So if you're sitting cross-legged, sit now with the opposite foot in front. Same if you're doing broken shoelace, you have the opposite ankle on top. And if you're coming into half shoelace, this time you can keep your right leg long, bring your left foot to the outside of your right hip. And if you're coming into full shoelace, you can bend that bottom knee as well. Let's take time to drop into your hips. Now we'll have our strap over our shoulder again. This time your right arm reaches out in front of you, press it away and then bring it all the way back behind you. Turn your thumb down and find your strap somewhere along your spine. Left arm reaches up, bend at the elbow and find your strap. Choose your own adventure here something that is an appropriate depth for you. Top elbow stays pointed up, back of the neck and the spine are nice and long. We're here for two minutes.
You're almost there. Keep your awareness anchored to your breath and to your body. If thoughts are popping up, just recognize them as thoughts and then try to come back. And now you can release your grip on your strap. We'll remove it for now and you are done with your strap. So well done for completing those poses. They are challenging, but very beneficial. You can release your legs from the shoelace pose. And again, just find a comfortable way to sit. Rebounding from the pose here. Noticing what feels different within your shoulders and your spine. Your lungs even. And this time you might take your gaze up towards the sky, opening up through the front of your neck. And then take your gaze down towards the earth, opening up through the back of your neck. you can come back to center. Our next pose is saddle pose. So this is one which really will help to open up through your quads, also creates a nice back bend, helping to open up through the front of the body. So this is where you might use a yoga block or a bolster or a cushion to sit on. And this pose looks really different for everybody. So as always with yin yoga, it's not about how it looks, it's not really about the alignment of your body, it's all about how it feels, about tuning into your body and figuring out what works for you. And that might look different than what you see on your screen. So to start, we will just sit on our whatever we're sitting on. We have our feet in underneath us, top of the feet on the mat. And then the knees are about hip width distance apart, if that feels good for you. Now, if this feels too much, you can always straighten one leg out, doing a half saddle. And then I'll let you know when we're halfway through the hold and you can switch to the opposite side. So a lot of us might feel happy to just stay here like this. You might be already feeling that stretch within your quad. Or you might like to go a little bit further, leaning back on your hands. And this is where we're finding that nice back arch opening up through the front of our body. And then if you want to come into the full version of saddle pose, you might be able to come back down onto your elbows and even lie flat on your back. For me, I know that I can't lie back too far when I am sitting on a block. And if that's you too, you can just very mindfully bring your hips in between your feet. Again, you might be happy staying here. You might experiment by leaning back. You might come onto your elbows or lie on your back. Remember, no right or wrong. We'll be here in saddle pose for the next three minutes.
and we're halfway through the hold now so you might switch to the opposite leg if you are doing a half saddle. And we'll take this opportunity to once again remind ourselves why we came here. Why are we creating this peaceful moment for ourselves? And even if it doesn't feel like a peaceful moment, just know that you're still working towards that goal. You're still speaking to the unconscious part of yourself that will help you to get to that goal. It's time now to release the pose wherever you are in it. If you're lying down, it can feel like you will never get up again, but don't worry, you will. Just take your time. And we'll release that pose with some windshield wipers. You can do these seated or you can lie on your back. We're just gently dropping the knees from side to side. If you're not already lying on your back, you can come down now. From here we'll come into a reclined twist. So you can have your left leg long on the mat and bring the sole of your right foot onto your left thigh. Hold that top knee with your left arm and then stack your hips on top of each other so your right hip is on top. Extend your right arm over to the right. You want to make sure that both of your shoulders are still connected to the earth. And if you want to go deeper into this twist, you can look over to the right. And we'll be here for two minutes. Reclined twist is a really good way to bring equilibrium back into your body at the end of the practice. It also helps to bring flexibility to your spine. You're stimulating all of your digestive organs as well. So really anchor your awareness into this pose. Savor every little squeeze.
You can make your way back to center, releasing your right leg. Slowly transitioning to the other side, bringing your left foot onto your right thigh, holding the knee with your right arm, maybe extending your left arm up. Stack your hips so your left hip is over the right. Bring your left arm back down to the left. Look at your left hand if you want to go deeper and make sure both shoulders are on the floor. Take about three more breaths here. And now you can come back to your center. Finding stillness to feel the echo of the pose or maybe bringing your knees to your chest if you want to release your lower back. And now you can unfurl out into corpse pose, either having your legs long or resting your knees against each other. Taking up as much space as you need. We'll spend the last three minutes of our practice here in corpse. You've worked hard to create this peaceful moment. And maybe you can feel all of this new energy just fizzling throughout your body. Helping to rejuvenate your cells. So just see if you can become 1% more relaxed. Can you drop your shoulders, your hips, 
your feet, your hands, your scalp. Can you relax your jaw? Soften your face. Once again, if thoughts are invading your time, it's okay. Just try not to engage. Try to come back to your body. And I know you might feel worried that the video has stopped, but just trust that you are where you're supposed to be. And I'll come and get you when the time is up. you can bring a little bit of awareness back. Come to lie on the right side of your body. Pausing here for a few breaths. Really honoring and congratulating yourself for doing this practice. And once again, for showing up for yourself. When you're ready, you can bring yourself back up into a seat on your mat. And we will officially end this practice here. So thank you for joining me. I hope you found this practice beneficial. If you liked it, make sure to leave the video a thumbs up, maybe comment below. And if you're not already subscribed, 
please do subscribe to my channel. I have lots more practices just like this one and I would love to practice with you again in the future. And speaking of future, keep an eye out for class six. It will be just like this one following the same format and style, helping you to hopefully create some peaceful moments. So I will see you again soon on the mat, but until then, take good care of yourself and goodbye.